Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan and thank you for joining us for our Wednesday update recorded on June the 12th. The big low is forming in the Tasman Sea, but there's a lot of change still yet to come through. This is not the most straightforward system as we've explained over the past few days and it is still looking like a messy forecast. The good news in today's update, uh, there is fewer chances of severe weather, but we are still seeing a fair amount of instability coming in and I think to put it simply, uh, this is a messy forecast and expect your local forecast, whether it's from us or Met Service, whoever you use, to chop and change a bit over the coming days because of just how large and messy this is. So let me try and make sense of all of this system, just briefly mentioning how calm it is around much of the North Island. So a cold night tonight coming in, uh, perhaps colder than last night for those in the North. The South Island down to minus nine around parts of Otago this morning and minus threes and fours around Christchurch. That temperature should lift up a little bit because of that northerly flow starting to develop. So this is how it looks as we go into this evening. Cloudy weather returns. I know there's been a lot of cloud around the country lately, especially the north of New Zealand. Here is the rain band at 6 o'clock tonight. So let's animate the next 24 hours. And you'll see that rain band moving in and sort of crumbling a little bit as it does so. So that's going to be a bit of patchy kind of rain developing later on tomorrow night in the north of New Zealand. And then overnight Thursday into Friday, it moves into the country itself. And uh, we've got rain setting into the west coast and also down towards Southland. So Thursday lunchtime, this is where this new developing low is centered, but it's got more than one center to it. It's a big stretched out system. It is not a perfectly circular storm like you would see in the tropics or perhaps further south. So this is messy and that means that the energy is all spread out and so minimizes the amount of severe weather. So you've got a bit of a windy northerly around the country, rain setting into the south here and then by afternoon and evening that rain band starts to move down the North Island. Maximum temperatures fairly mild in the North Island for Thursday uh, but cooler down here in the south. So Friday lunchtime. Now this modeling has moved around a, a lot over the last few days. What we're seeing now is low pressure basically stretched right out from the north to the south of the country. So that does a couple of things. Number one, it, it gets rid of the wind. It's not very windy if you're inside that area of low pressure. Number two, it brings in instability. So that means it might be sunny one moment and all of a sudden the clouds come in and it's raining out of kind of nowhere. That can happen and it can go the other way. You might have a rain forecast and the rain symbol and you wake up and it's kind of sunny or it's not looking too wet. That is what we're likely to see around the place, but we still expect this to dump a fair bit of rain, 20 to sort of 40, 50 millimeters around the country. And good news, some comes into the dry part of the upper South Island, but not so much for those of you in the east. So rainfall for the next couple of days from tonight through to Friday night shows, you know, a lot of the shading you see here around the North Island is between 20 and 40 millimeters, but some other areas here and there may go above that, closer to 100, and we're seeing similar totals around the upper part of the South Island between sort of 40 and 100 millimeters coming through. That could still change, but that's the current thinking, and the eastern areas not seeing very much rain, although hopefully a little bit coming in here to the dry parts of North Canterbury. Saturday lunchtime. The best way to explain this low pressure system is it's like a washing machine where you've thrown too much into it, too many towels and blankets and things, and it's all gone off kilter. As it spins, it gets all lopsided. That's exactly what's happening here. And so rather than just being parked in one spot with the weather spinning around it, the center itself is kind of spinning around in its own vortex. And so you'll see this big line of wet weather just offshore. If the low moves a little further westwards or northwestwards, it will drag that wet weather back in to the eastern part of the lower South Island. At the same time, if this moves further north or eastwards, rain bands here come in to northern New Zealand earlier. At this stage, it looks dry to begin with, and then a few showers do start to move on through. So this is a big system, and that spreads all the energy out, meaning most of the severe winds are out at sea here, not over us. On Sunday, Current thinking, I mean, this could change tomorrow, so just be aware of that. This is where it's supposed to be. The low is actually drifting sort of more towards Australia in this setup. That means warm, to, to some degree, warm winds for the north of New Zealand, colder air trapped here inside this system, but not a lot of wet weather around. But there could be some instability. That means, you know, a downpour or a thunderstorm even. Probably not too much in the way of thunderstorms around on Sunday, but they might be more here out at sea around this low. On Monday, the low 
weakening now finally because down to the south here it's a little hard to see there's a big block of high pressure sort of going underneath it and that cuts off the southerly and a low pressure system needs a northerly and a southerly coming up and that helps spin it so this is messy i keep saying that word but it is and there's another area of low pressure starting to form out to the east here so it is confusing for the next few days ahead we will keep you updated. Our next update is tomorrow, Thursday, and we'll take more, uh, you know, closer look at the rainfall figures coming through for the weekend, maybe comparing some computer modeling if there is any disagreement still. The best way to make sense of all of the confusion, download our app or go to our rural weather website and you can see those weather trends. So it makes sense of when the wind might peak, when you might get frosty weather, when it could be pouring with rain. It just all makes sense in, in clear graph form for you and also shows you the peak wind gusts and uh, rainfall totals. So download our new app, you can do it right here. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow with our next update.